Tonight on this Can't Miss edition of Sports Center with yours truly, counting down to Game 2 of the NBA Finals, we'll assess how Chris Paul can take over again tonight and lift the Suns to a 2-0 series lead. Plus, setting the ball for Giannis and the Bucks to bounce back with the two-time MVP must do tonight to steal home court advantage. And along with sparking this Suns championship run, how Devin Booker's impact on the city of Phoenix goes beyond basketball. We want to get done what we got to get done. We're all going to have to sacrifice something, and I think every great team has to do that. Phoenix, Arizona. NBA Finals Game 2 tonight on ABC. The Suns' stellar backcourt put on a show to take Game 1. So how will the Bucks respond, and can they avoid going down 0-2? And there he is, Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak. He had 20 points and 17 rebounds in game one after missing the previous two games with a hyper-extended knee. 32 points, 9 assists, or 12 of 19 shooting. That is the performance the one and only Chris Paul, CP3, put on display in game one. Obviously, if he continues to do that as this series progresses, it might not be a long series at all, and the Phoenix Suns will be crowned champions. The Milwaukee Bucks are clearly hell-bent on doing something about that. Didn't appear to be the case in Game 1 when they put the likes of Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, and P.J. Tucker on CP3, but chances are they're not going to do that in Game 2. You got an all-defensive NBA player in Drew Holiday on the scene who's known for locking down opposing offensive players. Wonder what he'll do in Game 2 tonight. We'll find out. We most certainly need to. For more... On the box, Suns, game two. Here's our reporters on the scene, starting with Dave McMenamin. Thanks, Stephen A. So I asked Chris Paul yesterday what separates this playoff run with the Suns from the dozen he had in his career before, besides the obvious of actually making it to the finals. And Paul told me, quote, our team is built a little different. We have a real team, like a team where you can't just key in on one or two guys. And then there's his development. He used to wear a bulky knee brace with the Hornets, but has worked on his body and diet since. Fueling his continued devotion for the game at age 36, none other than Kobe Bryant. Paul said Kobe said years ago, you just got to fall in love with it, the repetition of it. And Paul certainly has. And now for a report of the Milwaukee Bucks, let's hear from Malika Andrews. Dave, Giannis Antetokounmpo said he felt good the morning after playing 35 minutes in Game 1. And he said that now that he knows exactly what his body's able to do, he's going to be able to test it out, be a little bit more aggressive, he hopes, in this Game 2. And also they want to look to make a couple of adjustments as a team. On the defensive side of the ball, that means being a little bit better in transition, keeping players out in front of him, out in front of them, he said. And then on the offensive side of the ball, he wants to, instead of sometimes he thought they made the extra pass when the best shot was was actually right in front of them. So those are a couple of things they're looking to tweak in order to even up this series in Game 2, Stephen A. Thank you, Malika. Chris Paul and Devin Booker combined for 59 points, the third most by starting backcourt in a finals game over the last 25 years behind a pair of games by the Splash Brothers in 2016. We now welcome in the champion, that is Kendrick Perkins, and the Hall of Famer, that is Michael Wilbon. Michael Wilbon, I'll start with you. Put into perspective how great CP3 was in game one. Historically great. I mean, first game. First game in the NBA Finals in his career is something he's been waiting for and pointing to. Um, and to run the team that way and then have the third quarter that he did, Stephen, it was 16 points. I mean, it, it was a phenomenal performance. And now, as we spin it forward, the whole thing becomes, well, what is Milwaukee going to do about it? I don't want to hear about the foul shooting. I don't want to hear a word about that. Did the referees put... Brooke Lopez on Chris Paul and put Bobby Portis on Chris Paul and put P.J. Tucker to stop. I don't want to hear about well, you 10 plus right? 10 wait, wait, wait. free throws. Well, Wooden Hose clearly spoke to Phil Jackson. That's well, what he did. You know, he was know, complaining you know, about the officials. You know, I don't want to hear about Phil Jackson and Pat <laughs> Riley if we're talking about Boone Hose. Look, Milwaukee can win this game. They can even up this series. We know Giannis can have a 35.15 rebound game. We know that they can, they're can. they not going to stop Chris Paul. They can do a little bit better in controlling him, right. but it, it, they better be a lot smarter mm. about their choices than they were in game one. Totally agree. Big Perk, your thoughts about the performance of CP3 in game one, sir? Well, you, I know both of y'all, Stephen A. and Mike Wilburn, heard, heard the saying, great offense be good defense any day. And that's what, that's what Chris Paul had. He had a great offensive night. A lot of those shots were tough, contested twos and three-pointers. Now, with that being said, I thought that Drew Holiday did a lazy job of staying in front of Chris Paul and getting up over screens. He took the easy way out. He's an all-defensive player. He's a guy that's one of the most 
He's, he's one of the guys that's one of the best perimeter defensive players in the league, okay? You got to take ownership. You got to take ownership. And Budenholzer, you got to call him out. You got to challenge him. You got to tell him, don't get screened. Get small. Get up over the screen. Get the ball square. Get the bigs back to the paint. I expect Drew Holiday to be hugging CP3 huh? like a cheap suit tonight. Well, Ben, that's one of the questions I was going to ask you in terms of what do the Bucks need to do to make it harder. But I think that I'd be remiss in neglecting to mention the fact that Brooke Lopez was on him at one point. P.J. Tucker was on him at one point. Bobby Portis was on him at one point where Chris Paul was just dancing on him and making him look silly. And we love Bobby mm -hmm. Portis. What can the Milwaukee Bucks or what do the Milwaukee Bucks need to do specifically, Perk, in order to defend CP3 better? Well, what, here it is, Stephen. Now, you got to go back and look at Mike Wilborn. You look at the, the uh, series against the Atlanta Hawks, right? Early in the series, the Milwaukee Bucks were in the drop coverage. Trey Young and Lou Will was having it their way. Then they adjusted and they started switching, and Brooke Lopez did an excellent job of sliding his feet against their guards. Well, now you can't switch pick and rolls. One, because DeAndre Ayton is going to uh, uh, have it his way against those smaller guards in the paint. Two, you're going to leave CP3, you're going to leave Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis on the island, right, mm -hmm. against CP3 and Devin Booker. And the Phoenix Suns do a great job of player movement so that you can't, can't your help defense is not allowed to load okay. up. So with that being said, you have to go back into your drop coverage. You have to challenge Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton to get up over screens, Square the ball up, and you got to have your bigs talk loud and continuously. The screen is coming. Well, Force them left and have them in the drop. Let me stop you right there because I got to get Wilbon in to react to what you just had to say. What do you think about that? I love this. I just want to ask Perk. Perk is describing 80s and 90s defense, and all coaches want to do now through analytics is switch, 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 switch. Perk, do you think they'll even be that disciplined and that determined to do exactly what you're saying? We see so little of that now, right? Your teams did that. God knows the teams in Boston did that. But how, how often do teams do exactly what you're prescribing? Quick answer here, Perk. Go ahead. Whereas right now, we're looking at those Phoenix Suns. We saw CP3 and Devin Booker getting up over screens. We saw Jay Crowder and Mikael Bridges getting up over screens. It, uh, it has to do with your leader in the locker room challenging your players, and that's the coach, the head of the snake. Monty Williams hold these guys accountable. Budenholzer has to do the same. Somehow, Mike Wilbon, I don't think we could ever accuse Kendrick Perkins of having a problem holding people accountable. No, we wouldn't. I just want to throw that out there. I just want to throw that out there. We got more to get into right here with Sports Center with George Truly coming up. After returning in time for game one of the NBA Finals, we'll assess how Giannis' knee injury impacted Tuesday's opener and what the two time MVP must do to bounce back tonight. Plus, we'll examine Devin Booker's impact. Beyond basketball, inside the Sun Stars' deep connection with the city of Phoenix.